You never know when you're going to need it again, when you're going to want to see it again, or when the client's going to ask for it again. Just do me a favor, tell us a little bit about um, who you are and, and kind of where you at and where you're at in your business right now. Okay. Um, my name is Alejandra. I just graduated from UC Irvine. Uh, I lived out there, but because of the pandemic, I had to move back to the IE so I can save and look for a job. Um, and because of that, that, uh, that change, that sudden change, uh -huh. I found myself uh, trying to look for a job where there aren't really a lot of jobs. So I decided to start a company, or not a company, but a business where I right, can right. Make, have a better chance of um, getting a steady stream of income. Yeah, um, kind of like a, so a side hustle, now, right? To to help yeah. whatever else, like a, a normal job or whatever. Yeah, because the Monday through Friday, eight uh -huh. to five, doesn't isn't really appealing. It seems exhausting. Right yeah. now, I'm going through it and I hate it. It's absolutely yeah. terrible. So, so a side hustle. I mean, the mentality where money works for you. I really want that to be applicable to my life. Yeah. Um, and I see a lot of people. Um, flourishing in the photography and videography business and a lot of people don't know how to do that so yeah. and people are always looking for that in weddings and yeah uh, there's, there's so many different niches and and uh -huh. when you think about it the internet is becoming more and more prevalent way more and more important especially uh -huh. in this pandemic so a lot of businesses are being forced to transition into showcasing their business online. So they're going to need photos. They're going to need video. So mm -hmm. it's kind of an industry that's still kind of an in infancy. You know, if you think about it, it's still going to grow a lot. Oh yeah. A lot of people are starting to look into marketing because it's becoming a, such a high demanding uh, skill. Yeah. And that a lot of companies are looking for. Yeah, I remember definitely. back in like the early years, the fitness industry didn't really have a lot of videography. It was kind of just like pictures, but now Gymshark and yeah. Nike, they're posting videos of athletes and they have a lot of videography and photography behind their marketing. I agree. I agree. I, I kind of been, I, same. I've been into fitness since like 2014, maybe 2013. And mm -hmm. it's cool to see these companies, you know, see Gymshark, Alpha Lee, and some of yeah. these other brands, they kind of like started so small and now they're, they've grown so big. I think Gymshark's mm -hmm. been valued at a billion dollars and like, that's insane. Have all the yeah. good content, good videos, good photos, all this stuff. So it's, it's cool to see. Yeah. Well, so that's why I like, I want to get into real estate and hopefully uh, weddings and parties later on in, yeah. the, in the long run. So go ahead, feel free, shoot, shoot away at your questions, whatever you have to ask. Okay, so, so you said your name was Jonathan. Uh -huh. um, so tell us, or tell me about your, uh, how you got your first client. Um, story about that. Sure, sure, funny story. This guy, um, it's a little bit of a long story. I'll take you back to like 2016. That was the year I turned 21 and I had went to a bar with a friend and while we're there, we're just kind of casually having drinks. And I, I met with another friend there who was there with his friend who I didn't know. And we just all started talking, just uh, some, you know, just having drinks, hanging out. And the guy so happened to be in real estate. And I didn't think anything of it at the time. I was still working my normal job. And so we followed each other on Instagram. And then a couple of years go by. And in that time, we hadn't talked at all. But when I came, when it came to 2018, I graduated college and I was kind of at a place where like, okay, what do I do? I can go do the nine to five or I can, you know, try this business out that I want to do and see where it takes me. So I was doing my business and I was, I wasn't always just shooting real estate. I was shooting like everything, whatever I can get my hands on. Mm -hmm. So but I figured, okay, well, hey, if I have no clients coming in, I need to reach out to people to, you know, try and attract clients. So I made a real estate video, kind of like a whiteboard explainer video. And I reached out to that guy that I met two years before. So a whole two years, we didn't talk. And I sent him this video because I knew he was in real estate. And I say, hey, man, look, I, I'm not trying to sell you this video or anything. I just want your opinion. Is the video, is the information in this video accurate before I send it to other realtors? 
And he goes, yeah, that's, it is actually, it's pretty good. Um, Hey, we, we should set up a meeting with my broker. Let's go, let's get you in. We, we could use some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So then a couple of weeks later, I had a meeting with the broker and then he gave me my first shot, started shooting real estate stuff and then kind of took off ever since, you know, summer of 2018. Okay, for sure. Um, and how did you fund your equipment? Did you did you go to did you start off with the Monday through Friday job and that's how you funded or Yeah, so credit? um coming off of college, I want to make sure I have you. Are you still there? Okay, cool. Um coming out of college, I had my last semester. I was up until my last semester, I was working full time. So like I was working 40 hours a week but still going to school full time like I had a packed schedule um in that time I was able to save some money so I was like my last semester of college I'm like you know what? I'm just gonna you know enjoy this I'm gonna quit my job chill out and I had a camera at the time kind of something I bought just from my regular job right and mm -hmm. slowly but surely as I would get more jobs I would just reinvest whatever I was making I'd keep a portion and say okay I have you know a couple hundred bucks what do I need now Okay, now let me buy this and I, and, and then say, I want to upgrade my camera. Okay. Now I have a camera to upgrade. Let me sell this one first. And at the same time I would go on offer up and go find a better used camera. So mm -hmm. I literally started with like a Panasonic Lumix G7. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's a, a tiny little camera. Probably you can get the camera that I had and the lens together. You can probably buy for like less than 400 bucks. And it's just slowly but surely working and building. So it was that nine to five, you know, money that I had saved that helped me finance and start to get going. Okay. And then, so you did say, so you started off and you saw, would you recommend people to start off big, like investing their money with, you know, advanced equipment and, um, I All wouldn't that, or, would you them, or would you let them know that to start off small is the best way? Uh -huh. I, I, I definitely, I wouldn't get go too big. I would go kind of in the middle of the road. I think some of the equipment that I, I've recommended to you um, is, is pretty much where I tell anybody who is starting because there's a couple things. If you buy the most expensive stuff, you may later find that you don't even need all that mm -hmm. because – if you let's say I, I tell you to buy this exp these expensive cameras and all this stuff, one, you're gonna have a really hard time trying to learn how to use it. Two, um, you may not like using it, you may prefer just a smaller camera. And three, as you start shooting, you're gonna realize what works for you. And, and you, you may not even like to shoot real estate, maybe you you get the opportunity to shoot a wedding. And you say, hey, this was really fun. I kind of want to do more of these. I, I don't really want to do real estate. So as you grow, you're going to be able to learn and understand what equipment fits you. And it's something that you really can only learn through experience, but you'll figure it out. So that's why I say, you know, spend in total, you can spend like a thousand bucks if you have that much or even less on some equipment. And then eventually you'll work your way up as you begin to learn your best workflow. Mm, okay. Okay. Well, yeah, that's really great advice. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you think is something that's really necessary when you're doing post, when you're editing your videos, uh, like a tool? Um, the most necessary thing is to first discover the music. The music okay. is key. And then you edit to the beat of the music. You don't edit first and then add music. That that kind of, uh, it's mm -hmm. harder to create a cool cinematic look. So that's one thing I always do is definitely find the music first before I start editing. Okay. And then would you recommend, because some, I've seen some people who are afraid of losing their entire everything that they've recorded, their pictures, mm -hmm. and they buy a bunch of hard drives, a bunch of storage uh, SSD cards. Uh -huh. Would you recommend that? Or, cause that can be expensive too. Or would you recommend just your regular SSD and then upload it into your yeah. cloud? Let me show you what I use. Um, I 
pretty much use these things right behind me. So when I'm shooting, I have my memory cards, obviously. Then I'll come home and I'll upload to one of these SSDs. This is probably just a little over $100. So okay. anything that I'm currently working on is an active project. They'll be on this. Mm -hmm. That way I know where the footage is. And then once the project is done, I delivered it. The client approves. The client pays. All that footage, I never delete. It always gets saved. So I have one here. This is eight terabytes. Mm -hmm. This is from Costco, probably 180 bucks or something like that. This is from 2017 to 2019. And then I have another from 2019 to today. Mm. So those would be my suggestions. I think you, you can get one of these. This is a terabyte. This is a great option. You can even, if you're not that busy, you can even store a lot of files on this, even if you're not working on them. And then once you build up enough files, you can buy one of these to kind of save your, your stuff. Okay, and then with that SSD, the terabyte one, mm -hmm. is that, do you just connect it to your camera and it uploads, or is it wireless? No, yeah, you, you connect it to the computer. So you just grab this, this cable right here, you plug it in here, and then this would go into the computer. And you just kind of plug your memory card in, and then you can drag your files back and forth. Mm. Okay, okay. That would be my recommendation. If you want um, links to these, I'll, I'll send them to you. Okay. Yeah, because I just finished buying a, because I don't have enough space on my laptop. Uh -huh. um, so I just finished buying a five terabyte hard drive. Yeah. Because I know I, I really want to start putting stuff in there. Yeah. Uh, but my laptop can't and it's going to, it's just going to get slow. Yeah, I, I get it. Yeah, definitely. Just slowly but surely start putting all your stuff in there, stuff that's kind of old. Um, my number one tip is don't delete anything ever. You never know when you're going to need it again, when you're going to want to see it again, or when the client's going to ask for it again. So um, I just for that reason, I don't like deleting everything. It's just, it's just better not to. Okay, cool. And then just because we're running out of time, I do have one more question. I, I'm, I'm in so no rush too. If you want to, sorry, if you want to take a little bit more time, feel free. We're, we're good. Okay, for sure. Um, thank you. Uh -huh. So when you share your videos, once you're done with the project, you've saved it, how do you share that with your client? Do you send them a link or do you send, like, how does that work? Yeah, I send them uh, links through Dropbox. So I'm using a professional version of Dropbox. I pay annually, I think, for that. I can't remember how much, but I'm able to upload my videos and photos onto that Dropbox. And then I can actually disable the downloads. So when I send it to a client, they can view it, but they can't download it until they actually make a payment. I uh, found that to be like kind of my, the best way to go about it. That way I'm making sure I get paid on time. They're making sure that the video is, you know, what, what it was supposed to be, like it's up to their standards. And so both parties are kind of protected that way. Okay. And then say they don't want, uh, they don't want the link. They want to like on a disc. Do you offer that or? No, it's just, um, it's too much time for me to put it on like a, a, a USB drive and, and then mail it and do all this stuff. Um, not to mention most of the time the client just wants the video to upload it to either YouTube or the MLS or something like that. Instagram. So, like. Yeah. They, they just, they just want the digital file. The only mm -hmm. time I have ever done that USB drive is if it's like a wedding, that's kind of a different story. You know, that a little, they pay a lot more money, so they expect a lot more and, and, and it's understandable. It's worth the time in that in mm -hmm. something like that. Okay. And then, um, sorry, my phone's keep going off. Okay. Um, so for, so for that, for the payment, you mentioned payment. Mm -hmm. Do you require them to put down a deposit and then send you the rest of the money? Uh, I, I, for something like a wedding, I would, if that's what you want to get into. For real estate stuff, I don't. And I would like to, but 
it's hard because the competition doesn't. So if I did that, there would probably okay. some pushback there. You know, uh, if they're deciding between option A or me, and I'm requiring 50% deposit up front and this person is not, they may be a little bit intimidated in case they have to cancel their reschedule because of their client, that which is the person who owns the home. Mm -hmm. So I would like to, you know, require a deposit, but sometimes it, it, I can't always do that because for that reason, the competition. Okay. And is it often that real estaters just, they kind of cancel or reschedule last minute? Yeah, uh, somewhat. That they, they, I don't always get canceled or reschedules, but they do schedule last minute. Like I had a guy message me today. He wants to do photos and he wants it. He said as soon as possible. I told him I can do a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So it's not the shortest notice, but a couple of days is, is short in the, the photography world at least. Yeah. Okay. And does that bother you when they reschedule last minute? Uh, a little bit. If, if, if a client does it like more than two times, then at that point they'll be, then I'll require a deposit from them because if they're, if they're taking up my scheduled time and then they change it more than two times, then, then yeah, for sure. Then I'll require a deposit. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Cause, cause my sister, she does lashes uh -huh. uh, and she has a page on all of that and what she does and I thought was pretty smart um she requires a deposit when she makes an appointment that way if yeah. they do reschedule she does get a lot of rescheduling and she goes out you know out of her way trying to arrange her day around that appointment and so when yeah. they cancel it's inconvenient for her yeah but it always makes it up when she has a deposit and that's why I was thinking like maybe that's something that you do uh no yeah it's a good point though it's a good point um if you, if you can do it and, you know, you don't really live in, in a busy area, there's not too much competition, I would say do it. Go for it. Um, you'll probably get a lot more reliable clients. Um, it's not right for me at this moment, but maybe in the future I may implement something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then how long did it take you to get used to – or actually what software do you use to edit your videos? To edit videos, I use Adobe Premiere Pro. Mm, okay. How long did it take you to get used to it and learn the functionalities? Um, I would say to become like pretty proficient, it took me, I'd say close to like a few months to half a year or something. But that's only because I wasn't starting from scratch. I had came from, from iMovie and then I used Final Cut Pro and then Adobe Premiere Pro. So mm, okay. having that, that background knowledge in the first two really helped have my, my understanding for what Adobe Premiere Pro could do and how to use it. Mm, okay, so then what about like a complete beginner? Because the way I used to, I used to edit my videos was mm. through an app I bought. It was Cute, Cute Cut Pro. Uh -huh. um, I think it was like 10, 15 bucks. And I, that's how I edited it uh, through my phone, but I just felt really limited and the speed ramps and the slowing down just made it really choppy. Yeah. And that's when I decided I wanted to buy the, the actual software and a camera. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of limitations on a phone. Um, I'd say to, to become like proficient enough to say, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied in my work. I think you, it probably took me a couple of years um but keep in mind i've been messing around with video since i was like 12 years old mm -hmm. so i've been kind of doing this for a long time but i wasn't always that good it wasn't until the last couple of years that i really started focusing on trying to get better mm -hmm. um so i think it'll take a couple of years to become pretty proficient but then again things are always changing and, and you're always learning so there's always room to grow it's but in editing at least mm-hmm um, well, on that note, I think those are all of my questions. Cool. I yeah. hope you got some good value out of this. I hope I, I was able to answer things pretty good for you. No, yeah, you did. I uh, had more um, questions about the post. I don't know if you noticed, because uh, 
that's where I'm struggling because my computer doesn't have a lot of space. And so I had to uh -huh. figure out an alternative and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually, I mean, that's another thing too. It was one of those things I was working off of a 2013 laptop up until this summer. I, now I'm on a, a 2019 MacBook, but it mm -hmm. took me, you know, a couple of years just to get to that point. So it's just one of those things where you just slowly work, you do with what you have. And then once you have the money, then you'll be able to kind of upgrade and, and keep going, keep moving forward. Yeah, I have a 2014 Air, MacBook Air. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and I got this uh, refurbished off of uh, Amazon. See, yeah. I mean, you yeah. save money, but you, you make do with what you have and, and it'll all work out. As long as you're, you're persistent and you're, you're patient, things will go well. Yeah, definitely. And I'm really hoping to start and once, now that I have the external hard drive and the system. I'm really hoping to get some content out there and start practicing more than anything. Because I can watch as, as many vi videos as, as I can, but I feel like it's going to be a lot more different when I'm actually doing it. Yeah, the true the true um, test for you is like always in the actual, you know, the education comes when you're actually doing it hands on because you're going to learn, okay, that doesn't work so well or I can mm -hmm. do it this way. You, you, I think you get the point, but yeah, you really have to just get your feet wet. Yeah, definitely. And uh, videos like yours and, you know, your YouTube channel, I, your TikTok is what's most... Um, it was what's helping me the most because it's like cool. quick one minute videos and they actually pinpoint questions that I know not only me, but a bunch of other videographers, photographers yeah. have. Well, I'll keep, I'll keep trying to make more of those. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Keep, I encourage you. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, thank you so much for, you know, for doing this with me and for answering thank all the questions. Uh, and I hope to see more out there. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye. All right, guys, thank you guys for watching that session here. I hope you guys got some good value out of this content. If you did, do me a big favor, hit the like and subscribe buttons down below because I'm going to be trying to do a whole lot more of these for you guys. Um, if you guys have any questions, drop a comment. Or if you want to get in on a Zoom call like this, um, let me know, leave me a comment or send me an email down below and I'd be happy to see what we can schedule in for you. Other than that, you guys have a good one. Thank you for watching. Peace.